Welcome back. This is part three in a four-part series outlining a phenomenon called drift, which has led to the failure of many organizations. In part one, I talked about what drift is and how it occurs. Drift can happen without anything breaking, without anybody erring, without anybody violating the rules they consider relevant. In part two, I outlined the first three ingredients to the local rationality principle, which is the impetus for drift, and some tips for you in your governance role in terms of helping prevent drift or at least monitoring for red flags. In today's video, I'm going to take you through the second ingredient and some further tips for you in terms of your governance role. I'm Samantha McGorg, and welcome to our little corner of the internet where I help purpose-driven board members drive systemic change and make positive impact on the health, happiness, and resilience of society. In this four-part series, we are looking at a concept called drift, what it is, how it occurs, and ideally how to prevent it. Now, drift is an important concept for any leader to understand because it's a reason that organizations can experience failure or adverse outcomes without anything being broken or anyone making a bad decision. Drift is when local decisions that made sense at the time cumulatively become a set of socially organized circumstances and norms that make the system more likely to produce a harmful outcome. Now, you can think of it this way. A culture starts to form that is not consciously aware that their practices and behaviors, perhaps even their beliefs, are compromising health and safety outcomes because drift is a slow incremental process with multiple steps that occur over an extended period. Each step is usually small enough that it can go unnoticed with no significant problems until it's too late, which is why deviances are not report worthy and everything seems normal. The problem is this behavior will eventually lead to an injury or illness or even a fatality. It's just a matter of when. In part one, I introduce what drift is and its primary trigger, the local rationality principle. There are three ingredients to this principle, and in part two, I explain the first ingredient, and that is every organization is dealing with conflicting goals which cause people to make trade-offs at the expense of health and safety. And over time, these trade-offs cause us to drift towards an unacceptable boundary or a safety boundary where incidents occur. The second ingredient to the local rationality principle is the normalization of deviance. Now, this concept was coined by American sociologist Diane Vaughn when looking at where conflicts, mistakes, and disasters find their roots. She earned acclaim for her investigation of the failure of the 1986 Challenger space shuttle launch that killed all seven astronauts on board. To the presidential commission that investigated the incident, there was a linear relationship between scarcity, competition, uh, production pressure, and managerial wrongdoing. Meaning scarcity in the economic funding led to competition between space centers, which caused production pressure to get the launch up and going, and Challenger was already behind its launch schedule, which ultimately led to managerial wrongdoing. All of this sounds pretty logical to the untrained eye, and it's certainly how we traditionally approach understanding incidents or failure. However, due to the web of relationships and feedback loops in complex systems, relationships are non-linear. Things don't happen in a nice sequential fashion, which means the infamous Swiss cheese model that has been a traditional explanation of how incidents occur is no longer relevant in today's organization. And furthermore, looking for broken parts or bad decisions will not help you prevent future incidents because with drift, nothing needs to be broken and there doesn't need to be a bad decision for an organization to experience failure. That's why Drift is so relevant to your governance role, because if you're to ask the right questions, you need the foundational knowledge of these important concepts. In your governance role, it's important that you're applying systems thinking by looking up and out and becoming aware of the systems and the relationships, because these will provide you with a better understanding of why people do what they do and why things happen the way they do. Whereas looking down and into the organization provides knowledge, knowledge of the parts and how they work or what happened in the event of an incident, but it won't provide you with an understanding of why, which means that finding a root cause will only tell you what happened because we go down and into the organization to find what's broken. Finding a root cause is also not going to prevent future incidents because remember in complex systems, the relationships are non-linear. So things don't happen in a sequential order. It's often a lot messier than that. So going back to Diane Vaughn's theory of the normalization of deviance, she came to the conclusion that of course production pressures played a huge role in middle management allowing rule violations and contributing to the silencing of those with bad news, but not in the way envisaged by the presidential commission who ultimately exonerated top administrators such as the board and the executive and blamed middle management. Vaughn found that production pressures and resource limitations gradually became institutionalized, taken for granted. They, these were patterns of behavior that became the worldview that every individual brought to organizational and individual operational decisions. 
Remember, drift is a slow, incremental process that's difficult to see. So bad processes or deviant behavior are not uncovered because they're become ingrained within the organization, accepted by both the organizational structures and the culture. So signals of potential danger are acknowledged and then rationalized and normalized. And this is the danger because we normalize this behavior. It becomes our worldview. And we will unconsciously apply our worldview to various circumstances that shouldn't necessarily warrant the same mindset or the same approach. Now, Vaughn defined normalization of deviance as people within the organization become so accustomed to deviant behavior that they don't consider it as deviant, despite the fact that they far exceed their own rules for the elementary safety. The normalization of deviance is important to understand when looking at how the board influences structures and systems that influence people's perception of priorities. Now, when we focus our attention on blaming individuals for poor behavior or stupid decisions, we are not giving enough consideration to how the organizational structures and systems influence people's decision making. And this is where the board has influence because the board influences people's perception of priorities or what's called the organizational climate through what the board notices and comments on, measures, controls, and rewards, and in other ways systematically deals with. And climate influences culture over time. Let me give you an, a health and well-being example. I think you'd agree that it's not that we're comfortable that work-related stress has become linked to an excess of 120,000 deaths per year in the United States, making the workplace the fifth leading cause of death in the US. Or that in Australia, over a five-year period, 91% of claims involving a mental health condition were linked to work-related stress. We didn't consciously create these structures and systems that would eventually make people feel stressed at work, but much of the structures and systems that we have created at work that have led to the normalization of deviant behavior that compromises our mental and physical health has happened slowly and incrementally over the years and in tandem with our social and technological environment. And this unnoticeable drift has led us to the situation we are in now, where mental health is at a critical tipping point. So that's the second ingredient to the local rationality principle, which leads to drift, the normalization of deviance. Here are a few tips for you to think about in your governance role to help prevent drift or at least monitor for red flags. From a proactive perspective, don't measure the success of health and safety in your organization by the absence of negatives like injuries and illness. Safety should not be defined through instances where it is not present. And secondly, don't let past success determine future success. This is a principle of complex systems. The past cannot predict the future because complex systems are inherently unpredictable. From a reactive perspective, ask counterfactual questions, simple what-if questions that people should be asking when they're doing an investigation. Challenge people's worldview, challenge their assumptions and beliefs about the system. If you're looking at an investigation report, ask yourself, would the absence or modification of this cause have altered the course of events? Now, essentially, you're questioning whether an identified root cause is actually something that needs further exploration. Is that a cause or a symptom of something else? If it wouldn't have altered the course of events, then it's likely a symptom. Your goal is to learn enough that you realize or appreciate that given the conditions those involved in the incident faced and the information they had, you probably would have made the same decision. So in order for you to challenge other people's worldview, you need to be open to challenging your own. So what assumptions do you hold about the system? What might be preventing you from understanding what happened? A common misconception I hear from board members is that safety is all about rules, but I hope this video has given you some insight as to why that's just not the case. In part four of this series, I'll walk you through one last ingredient to the local rationality principle that causes drift to occur. I hope you'll join me there. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you click that subscribe button to help my content rise to the top so that others can enjoy it as well.